Hi, my name is Martin Smith and I'm here to talk about luminiferous ether. The first thing I need to do is disclaimer, and that is to say, since Einstein came up with the idea that space is curved, luminiferous ether has been thrown out from standard physics, and yet people have uh, light travels through things and there seems to be a framework around everything that we do. So, uh, going over different types of ideas of luminiferous ether. Uh, we have the electron hole idea. Notice I say idea and not theory. Uh, this is where we have electrons and protons or electrons and positrons. Basically we have a positive and a negative. And what we're saying is that space or some particle comes through a hole that we see as an electron and travels from that hole just as though uh, it was air pressure or some other force and goes back into the positive hole and out again. And so here we have uh, multiples, if you're looking at uh, multiple universes, then we're, we're looking at it similar to a battery and how you have energy on one side, it flows through a central point and it flows to the other side of the battery. So we would be in the middle of this battery and the energy would be flowing through us. With multiple universes it would flow through us, then it would go to another universe, then it would go to another universe, and eventually come back to us and there's the momentum keeps all the energy going. Uh, it is an idea. Is one I thought of many, many years ago. I'm not the only person that's thought of it. Uh, quantum field theory. Uh, you know, a lot of people say quantum field theory is full of hogwash, nothing but hogwash. And fields are nothing more than a mathematical collection of groups. So if we have a group of entities moving in a certain direction, most likely they're moving in uh, what we would see as a field. So the field theory does apply. Uh, it's describing its actions more than describing what it is. I'm thinking that field theory is the same thing as manifolds, I'm th as in uh, field theory is part of manifolds, and that is manifolds also collection, and you're describing large groups of things with manifolds and how they move. This is done a lot for uh, weather patterns. Then we go into string theory, and that's where we're describing the universe through mathematics. And there's thousands of different types of string theory, and one comes up every day. Uh, uh, another section of string theory is string loop theory, and this is where we're just trying to describe how the universe acts through mathematics but we're not really looking at what the universe actually is. For fields and strings, I did use the word theory rather than idea. That means large groups of people have agreed that this is a very likely scenario of how this happens. Then we get into quarks and lepton theory. Uh, this was started up in the 1970s. And again, the word theory so we have large number of people that believe in quarks and leptons. Uh, it should be said that a quark and lepton has never been divided, has never been found on its own. Saying that they exist is, you know, you're walking on thin ice if you're going to insist that everything revolves around quarks and theory, quarks and leptons. In fact, I even started my uh, vortex theory for how light was made thinking of quarks and leptons being started up in three, so I tried to figure out or tried to apply vortex waves in groups of threes to make up electrons and to make up photons, and it just did not work. I eventually came back to it. I'm still working on that now, as in threes. Uh, if you have, it, have uh, vortex models in, in sets of twos, you don't get a wobble but if you have them in sets of threes, it does create a wobble. So, any time you uh, think of physics, 
it's a very bad idea to get away from observations. So if an observation doesn't agree with your model that you're creating, revise the model. Don't revise what you say is out there. Don't revise your observations. Uh, let's see here. Number seven. Uh, the curve space and time idea. This one is one of Einstein's. And Einstein, he mastered two things. One was uh, physics, and the other was to be able to create an argument that was extremely difficult to disprove. He worked in a patent office. So, you know, from that he gained experience of how to bullshit other people. Sorry for the language, but that's the only way to describe it. And he became very good at it. His arguments, he was, he created arguments more for the proof of an argument and the uh, difficulty of disproving an argument. Uh, curve space-time, I put idea under this, most people will call it a theory. I don't give it that much strength. Uh, most of what Einstein did, he came off of other people's work, he put it in different words, and he said, Eureka, this is the way things are. And he became quite famous by doing that. So he did, he did have a few novel uh, ideas or curves or additives, things he added to other people's work. And probably still one of the leading physicists in the world for uh, coming up with new ideas and exploring things. Okay, the last one that I have is uh, 3D quantum dot theory. And this is the one that I'm working on right now. It is theory. And it is a theory, not an idea. And there's three basic ways of looking at this one. I mean, you can break this up into three groups. One is where you have everything collected together, where it's so condensed that it's not a square lattice or a cubical lattice of parts that what happens when you condense it is you get, end up with sheets and w one sheet will shift over a little bit and fit in more like a honeycomb than an actual square box if we were to draw straight lines through it and say this is this is the medium of where things should be these particles should be and that they're just bouncing around the, uh, if you're looking to visualize 3D quantum dot theory, then uh, the, the way I do it is I'm either thinking of marbles or I'm thinking of uh, steel BBs. And you start with uh, a couple million steel BBs in a, in a box. Think of them uh, where gravity's not affecting them and there's a lot of pressure on them. So any kind of energy introduced to that box will create vibration and give space between those things. And so the, the three versions of the qu quantum dot theory, basically you can think of three different lattices. One is a uh, crystallized lattice structure where you're dealing with sheets and they're shifted and they're compressed. The other one is uh, thinking of it more of a liquid where there's just enough energy to make these things rounded where, they, where they're not in sheets and they can move around in circles just, just a little bit, but you don't really see large motion. Each, each little dot pretty much stays in its place and it doesn't move around. Uh, the third one I'm getting to that I'm working on is the uh, quantum dot gaseous uh, idea. Uh, I don't know that it quite qualifies as a theory yet, or if it ever will. But if you don't explore some of these things, then you're not going to find anything new. Uh, Einstein said the, and I will use Einstein's quote on this, the definition of stupidity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. In physics, you need to explore things that no one else has explored or go down avenues. And what I'm trying to do is break things up and 
uh, into pieces because like I say there's a theory coming out every single day and if you were to go over all the new theories you'd find yourself in a in a trap and you'd never get out of it you'd never go anywhere and you'd never get anything done so to wrap things up I'm gonna wrap it up with another disclaimer uh, if you are talking about luminiferous ether and any possible form of luminous ether you will never get funding for any research you will be considered a quack if you throw the luminiferous ether out uh, of all your ideas and all your equations then uh, your your fields your particles they're not moving through anything and there's nothing really that connects them together and we know that between this universe and the next universe there is something that connects things together everything is timed out you know, that that is our only connection to other universes is the light that approaches us the light but well I shouldn't say just the light but the light and the gravity that comes from other universes are pretty much the only thing that really uh, connects us to other universes so be careful when you're throwing luminiferous ether out of your thinking be careful if you're using it and expecting funding now, there is a comment section down below if you think of another grouping of luminous for see ideas or ideas of the universe put it down in the comment section if you've seen some YouTube videos of something neat and interesting put it down in the conversation 